Well, hey, good morning, guys, and um, welcome to week two of Management 103, uh, Management Principles. Um, we are busy with uh, class number two, the second lecture and lesson in the week. Um, we have no students with us online this morning, as my only student, Nathan, um, has to uh, call into work. Um, he does translations for um, doctors and diplomats. Um, he's from the Congo. And uh, so he translates uh, things into um, different African languages as well as into um, French because they speak French in the Republic of uh, Congo. And uh, so he's pretty proficient with, some, with a lot of languages. So that's his job. And so um, I have let him know that I would do this recording for him this morning uh, just because he can't be in class. So well, anyway, welcome. It's uh, my privilege today to be able to spend this time with you, chatting to you about some of the leadership principles that we are uh, working through in Management 103. And it's, it's really a fascinating class. It is an introductory class. Uh, to management and uh, Nathan is in the computer science program. However, this is a requirement for him. So um, I'm happy to do this recording and uh, happy to, to take him through week two, some of the principles and things in week two that he needs to know. So the objective and the purpose of this class is we are talking about management versus leadership. Now, um, the reason we need to know the difference and the reason there actually is a difference is because not many people realize that um, having a management role versus having a leadership role um, is two different things. Now, they are used interchangeably and they are synonyms and both roles and both types of positions and both types of jobs um, are interchangeable. They overlap. Uh, it's very general. So what we're talking about today is, is, is a very general and broad um, way of pulling the two apart and defining what is management and defining what is leadership, looking at the two different types of personalities or roles or jobs, because a lot of people can have personalities that are more managerial, more task orientated, um, and more process orientated. And then people, there are other people that have more leadership personalities. They are more kind of your visionaries, um, leaders who want to grow the organization, uh, leaders that look at how things can improve, make things bigger, make things better. They, they're not very process driven. It's all about the vision. What is the mission and the vision of the organization? and How to extend that and grow that. Um, so we're going to take a look at a couple of slides here this morning and a few video clips just to um, really determine and, and look at this concept and look at this theory because we talk about some leadership theories, some management theories, and um, look at what, what is the, the knowledge out there regarding these two. The reason we need to know this is because at some point in our lives, every one of us may be in a managerial or leadership role or a supervisory role. Um, we may have already been team leaders or been part of teams where we were the supervisor or we were in charge. And um, so understanding this gives us a bit of background and a foundation um, uh, about who we are, what we naturally do as managers and leaders and um, what our roles are required of us. And um, I think as a student, at some point in your life, especially as you get older and you get more knowledge and you build your career and you move up in your corporation or in your career, you definitely start getting into more managerial roles. And um, hopefully once you're done with this degree, that'll happen pretty quickly for you and you can start moving up in your career. And that's why you, you study. That's why you learn. That's why you get a degree. So you can move up in your career, uh, you can uh, aim for maybe more managerial positions, which pay more. Um, and especially if you're someone that is very leadership orientated, you are a natural leader, you're naturally driven, um, you are a hard worker, you're very diligent. Um, those things tend to help you move along into managerial positions really quickly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you this morning. <clears throat> Let's make it this screen over here. And I'm just going to pull this across. This is our course shell and our readings and tools um, regarding management and leadership for this week. Just want to just reorganize a few things here on my desktop so that um, I feel more organized. Okay. So the first part of the week, I want to recap and remind you that we talked about a couple of management principles and um, that related especially to the four functions of organizational management. What are the four functions that a manager is required to be able to do when they are in that role? And there are four very broad major terms 
and functions. Um, and we, we spoke more about that in detail. Um, just to remind you, the four, four managerial roles are organizing, um, leading. Um, I've even forgotten some of them. <laughs> We're going to recap them a little bit later on as well. They're in the PowerPoint slide, so I'll get you there. Um, leading, organizing. Hmm. It just shows you how, how quickly a person can forget from day to day what you've done. <laughs> we'll recap those in a second. I'm going to open them just open one of these slides here real quick. I can find the one that I'm looking for. Oh my gosh. Anyway, let me not delve into that too much right now. Um, I'm, it's going to be one of the one of the PowerPoint slides later on. <laughs> uh, there's just so much on my plate right now and I, sometimes I forget everything that I needed that, I'm, that, that happened two days ago. Okay, so Kind of to get us into the idea between leadership and management, I'm going to play this little video clip. It's in week two's course readings. Okay, here's the tip. And then I'm going to back up and tell you why I think it's important. The tip. Be absolutely crystal clear in your own mind about the difference between leadership and management and make sure the people around you are also crystal clear about that difference. Now, let me back up. Management is fundamentally a set of processes, uh, the most core of which are planning, budgeting, organizing, staffing, controlling, and problem solving. And what management does is to take a system, an organization of people and technology, and make it function the way it was designed to function, producing a good or a service on time, on budget, um, absolutely the way it was designed to work. What leadership is, is it's uh, a set of processes involving creating a vision of the future and a strategy for getting there for communicating that out to people in a way that gets them to buy into it and then creating an environment that motivates those people, that inspires those people to want to make that vision a reality. And what leadership does is it creates, in a sense, the systems that managers manage or it takes them and it changes them in some fundamental ways to adapt to changes outside an organization, uh, to grab opportunities, to duck hazards, uh, to raise standards. Both are obviously very important, but if you don't get it clear what each is, you run into these problems. Here's the most typical. All of a sudden, something happens in a company's environment. Basically, the most common is the speed of change goes up. And somebody notices this and it starts affecting, for example, their financials. And they come back and they say, we've got to do something about this. And one aspect is clearly we need more and better leadership at the top or at the top and right below the top. And those people really try hard to beat away at that, but they think that management is leadership. So what they work at is the planning stuff, the budgeting stuff, the organizing stuff. And at a certain point, you can literally become overmanaged and underled. And it's almost impossible, unless you've got a monopoly, to be overmanaged and underled and do well in the kind of world that we're living in today. I see it in performance appraisal forms. People are trying, the leadership word is coming out more. There it is in the performance appraisal. And I look at the items underneath it, half of them are management items. So because of the lack of clarity, as they try to cram that into the system, into succession, Succession planning into um, recruiting. What they're 
in reality doing is promoting more people who are good at management, bringing in more talent that has management potential, not leadership potential. And they're not solving the real leadership problem that can help them deal with this increasingly turbulent, changing environment. You gotta understand the differences and the people around you need to understand them. And if you don't, you get yourself into trouble. Wow, I think that was a very clear explanation of the difference between management and leadership. I loved that. I loved how he said uh, that you need both and that how leadership um, it's kind of the overarching um, management system, but managers then take care of all the details underneath that. And, um, and he said that you can be overmanaged. And that is when people micromanage every little thing you do and they criticize and they pull apart and they don't give you space to actually do your job, but they're constantly checking on you, which they should be, but it shouldn't be on an hourly, daily basis. It should be maybe on a weekly or a monthly basis to give you space to do your job because people can be overmanaged. and it's very stifling and it's very unfortunate when companies start to do that because its managers become desperate to make sure everything is, everyone's doing what they're doing and we're so focused on the processes that we're actually not focused on the mission and vision of the organization and the, the, the major important direction, importance of the direction that the company is trying to go in. So very, very interesting um, video clip. I just love the way that he put that. That was very, very well said. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I want to go into management of principles, this PowerPoint that we have for um, week number two and have a look at some of the theories just got to open this as soon as it's done. There we go. Regarding management and leadership and some of the theories for this week. Um, before I go into this, so Nathan, I know that you're going to be watching this um, at your own time and on your own pace. Um, did you find that little video clip interesting? Did that clarify and help explain um, how important you need to how important it is to have managers as well as people who are leaders and have a combination because not everyone can be both or is both and people do different functions in a business, even in management. It's, you know, from the bottom, when you're just an employee, you look up at management and you think, well, um, it's all the same thing. Um, but you don't realize that different managers play different roles and have different skill sets. And if you have the wrong manager or the wrong leader in the wrong position, it can, it can be pretty fatal for your company. So if you've got someone in a position who should be a leader and a visionary and they're a manager, um, what happens is they start to overmanage the company. Or if you have someone in a managerial position who is a leader, who is more visionary, and they don't know how to manage processes and people, that can also be detrimental because then that person is trying to lead these people, but they don't know how to put the systems and processes in place for the employees under them. So very, very interesting um, topic today. It's one of my favorite topics. And um, I love to think about it. And I, I love to look at myself and wonder, well, what kind of manager am I? Am I more leadership and visionary? Or am I more managerial um, in personality and in talent? And um, I think I have a bit of both. Um, but sometimes I wonder about the managerial because I don't think I enjoy systems and processes as much as I enjoy just leading people. Um, so maybe that makes me more of a leader than a manager. But however, in this job, in this role, as the dean, I have to do both. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of managerial work that I need to do and that takes a lot of time and focus and energy and I've got to focus on that so that I, I get that right. Um, and obviously I don't always get it right. So um, thinking about your job and what you do, um, Nathan, I know that you are not in a managerial role or position, but can you think back of when you were in a team? Um, would you say that you are more a manager or are you more a leader? Um, and as you think about that, let me go through these slides. We're going to talk about a few more things and think about that as I'm talking, because the more we talk about it, the more you start to realize, wow, I think I am more like this. And so it's important that if I understand that I am more a leader, the jobs that I need to eventually work towards should be leadership. If I'm more a manager, then the jobs I should work towards are more managerial, more operational and, and so on. So let's have a look at these slides real quick. Um, Although I'm covering this, uh, these PowerPoint slides for chapter number one, remember that you're still responsible for reading the assigned chapters for each week. And let me just 
see if I can open this. Hmm, it's not working the way that I want to on this particular screen. Okay, as long as you can see what I'm doing here. I have two screens, so sometimes it's a little funky. It doesn't always do what I want it to do. All right, so chapter one, management and leadership principles. Okay, so managers. If you have a look at managers, here are some of the things that are very typical. They coordinate the resources used in day-to-day -day operations. That's really what they do. So what are some of those resources? The material, all the material resources. We're talking about equipment, we're talking about supplies, anything that is material, that is, um, that is physical. Um, it could even be, for instance, the buildings, right? Um, the actual structure, the physical structure, and everything inside the physical structure that is non-human, that is computers, um, that is uh, tables and chairs, that is space, um, locations, um, offices, everything uh, from the smallest paper clip uh, to the biggest copier or um, server or uh, so that's really it's, it's it's quite to be a manager you've got to be able to manage a lot of different things at the same time and be on top of a lot of complex processes and things and you've got to have a lot of balls you're juggling a lot of balls in the air at the same time then you're in, you're also responsible for all the human resources, all the people, where are, what are their tasks, what are their jobs, how are they doing it, when do they need to get it done, who's got to be where, who's got to work where, who's in which department, who's leading the department, and we've talked about this before, is that you, you need to manage other managers as well. All the financial resources, in other words, all the money that comes into the business and all the money that goes out of the business, um, and what happens in between all of that with the money, um, the budgets, and, and so on, um, and the financial reports. All of that falls under your jurisdiction. And then your informational resources, of course, all the communication, um, all communication with customers, um, customer complaints. Um, gosh, we can go on and on about all of this, but that just gives you kind of a general idea of what is required um, when you're a manager. Remember earlier, I couldn't remember what the four uh, functions of a manager was. I said planning and leading. I beg your pardon. <laughs> like I said, I often forget from day to day what I talked about two days ago. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. And we, we talked about this in more detail um, earlier this week. So I'm not going to go into that because that was Monday's discussion. So planning, organizing, leading, controlling we're going to skip through those because like i said we've discussed it earlier already so leaders they have the ability to influence others to lead other people um it may seem easy to lead people but truly it is not it's one of the most complex things that you can do as a person and it's a skill that you can definitely learn a lot of people have that ability naturally people are drawn to them people listen to them people follow them and for other people it really is a tough job you've got to learn how to motivate people how to draw people in how to help them move in the direction you want them to go help them to see the vision or see the picture that you have in mind and, and get everyone on board and it's well, this guy, this is where we're going and then answer all the questions why and how and when so managers assign or delegate tasks to employees Leaders look for voluntary cooperation. They rely on influence rather than telling people what to do. Okay, so I have to ask myself the question, am I, do I rely on telling people what to do or do I look for voluntary cooperation? And that gives me a clue um, as to who I am. Am I a leader or a manager? Now, once again, that tells me that I have more leadership skills in me than more managerial because I like it when people naturally want to jump in and join the cause or join the direction and they are self-motivated. Um, it's not fun for me to always be telling people what to do. Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do this now. And then you've got to do this. And why is this not done? And, and, uh, and other people enjoy that. They enjoy, you know, um, constantly telling people what to do and checking up on them. You know, and that's not something that is, that is the, the funnest thing for me, although it is part of the job and I have to do it and I've learned how to do it. But I personally look for voluntary cooperation. Um, so Nathan, once again, um, looking at those two statements, uh, which one do you think uh, is more suited to your personality? Leaders, formal leaders have a title or a position. Informal leaders have the respect of their peers. Very interesting. You don't need a title to be a leader. Okay, very, very interesting statement. Um, 
people who are naturally leaders will, will lead wherever they go. They will lead their families, they'll lead their children, they'll lead their friends and co-workers, and they'll always jump and take the lead because they naturally just do that. Um, and they don't need the title um, because it is who they are intrinsically. And so even in any organization, you know, you can be a leader, the job that you are doing, for instance, your um, translating job, you need to lead yourself. You need to manage yourself. So there's a lot of leadership and management skills in just being an employee uh, and, and just having a job. And uh, so you can be a leader wherever you are, even with the, the tasks that are on your desk to do for the day. I need to lead myself, I need to manage myself, and I, I need to lead my team, or even if it is just myself, um, you can be a leader. So and if you do a job well, and you can manage yourself well, and um, you can work towards uh, making sure things are on your desk are in line with the organization's mission, mission and vision, you are then a natural leader. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a great quote to bear in mind always that you don't need the title of a leader to be a leader. Um, and if you are leading and managing yourself well, supervisors and managers will see that quickly. And when, they, when it's time for promotions, those are the people they're going to promote first because they're already seeing the leadership and the management skills in them just by the way that they do their job. So a very interesting concept, right? <laughs> So leaders, they have some key skills, for instance, they build trust. Now notice a lot of this is people orientated and people related, okay? They build trust because they have to lead people. Their main task or their main passion is people. They want to build trust. They are empathetic. In other words, they understand. They're understanding of what people are going through and they, they are compassionate. Um, they explain why. They try to help people understand why is the organization moving in this direction or why are we making these changes? They're naturally curious. Uh, they want to explore things. They want to they try different things. They want to take a little bit of a risk where a lot of managers are not risk-minded. Um, their purpose is clear. They often have very clear purpose in their mind of like they can look at the entire organization and say, you know what, this is where we need to make changes. This is what we need to do. This is where we need to go. Um, this is where we're struggling. And they can make some big changes, overarching changes for an organization um, for the better because they can. They really are big picture people. They are not super detailed or super process task orientated uh, the way the managers are. So they're very much more people oriented, orientated and they're very visionary. Uh, they can see the picture um, before they've even started talking to people and putting people in place and getting the systems ready. Um, they, they, they can see the picture in their mind of where things need to go very, very clearly. So just uh, to compare that managers have certain qualities and leaders have certain qualities. So if we look um, at, at what they are, managers, they focus on the organization, the structure and processes, right? Leaders focus on people very people orientated. Managers are rational, very rational thinkers, and visionary, leaders are very visionary, kind of, in, they got a, they got great imaginations. <laughs> they can imagine things that uh, most people can't. Managers like to maintain stability. Leaders, they want to promote change. They want to see things change for the better. They're always trying to improve things. Managers assign tasks. And the leaders define purpose. So managers tell us what we need to do. Um, the leaders will tell us why it needs to be done. What is the purpose of this? Where are we going? Managers like to organize. They organize everything. They're very organized people. Leaders tend to nurture. They tend to nurture people um, and um, relationships, right? They build relationships. Managers are very analytical. They analyze everything. And they have to be because they've got to be extremely detail orientated where leaders are innovative they want to invent and uh, they want to move things along and they don't like to stay in the same place doing the same thing all the time then managers uh, a manager's quality it's a position of power um, and it's not it's a, it's just the position they have power in that position they use their position as a manager to, to tell people what to do however a leader has personal power it is it, they, they are naturally influential. They don't have to tell people what to do. People are going to just follow them naturally without them having to say, hey, I need you to do this. Hey, I need, people will just follow them. They'll be like doing things and, and everyone's going to follow along and, and, and do their job. Um, and that is the difference between a leader and manager. Now, 
I want to say that there's no one of these that is bad um, or better than the other. They are just two very distinctive and different types of people, types of roles, types of jobs, and types of positions. Um, and so we're speaking very generally here. Yeah, there's no one bad and the other good. Um, they are both good. And everything we are saying is just factual. Um, and it's all positive. There is no bad here. Um, you need both. In an organization, you need managers and you need leaders. So a couple of our motivation theories. I'm not sure if you've heard of Maslow's um, hierarchy. Now, what this is about is that um, as a person, and we're talking about people individually, as a person, your broader psychological needs need to be take care, taken care of first. So in other words, when you are psychologically fed, you've, you are nourished, you have sheltered your warmth, you have, that's the broad basis of who you are, your basic needs. When your basic needs have been taken care of, then you need, you have safety needs, right? Like security, stability, and freedom from fear. So, and, and the triangle starts to narrow. That's kind of a, a smaller part of what you need. Um, it's a, the foundation is very large and the rest kind of narrows up. Um, once you feel safe, you start to want to feel social. Uh, you want to belong. You have family. You, you, you uh, uh, get yourself a family. You get married. You have kids. Uh, you, you find love. You find friends. When that need is met, you as a person need some self-esteem. Now, this is where studying and learning comes in. You want to achieve something. This is where building your career comes in. Achievement, respect, recognition. And this is what you need from other people as well. I need to get respect from the people I work with. I want recognition for the work that I do. Once we have got that basic need covered, one of the last needs we need is self-actualization. In other words, fulfillment. What fulfills me as a person? Um, what do I want to pursue? Is it some inner talent? Is it my creativity? Is it um, my, my job? Is it my family? Um, what will fulfill me as a person? And, and once all these needs have been fulfilled, you feel self-actualized. You feel fulfilled as a person. In other, so in other words, I can be pursuing some inner talent. Let's say like art. I want to be an artist and I'm very good at art, but I don't have food, water, and shelter and warmth. I'm going to have a problem because that is a big basic need. It's a very big part of a triangle. So unless I get that sorted, the self-actualization part is not going to materialize well for me. I'm going to struggle. I'm going to struggle having self-esteem. I'm going to struggle being socially because all I have on my mind is this issue. I don't have a home. I don't have food. Um, I don't have money. It's, I'm worried constantly. And so even safety becomes an issue. So all these things will become an issue if my basic needs are not met. So let's see why we're talking about this. We're talking about motive, what motivates people. So you've got to understand people in your organization, unless they have their basic needs met, you can't expect them to achieve, respect others or be respected, or even strive for recognition because all that's on their mind are their basic needs that haven't been fulfilled. And so you've got to make sure as a leader or manager, first of all, everyone that works for me, they have a home, they have a salary, they have food, they have water, they are secure and they are stable. There's no fear in their lives. Um, and then they are, they have friends and family. And once they have those things taken care of, now their minds can be focused on their job, um, on achievement and on fulfillment. And so as leaders, when we understand this, we understand people better. And we understand that if our, our um, uh, employees are coming to work and they have some very severe problems going on, like let's say they're going through a divorce, um, which is part of social and family, or let's say they have a child that's died or a parent that's died, their mind, are, they're so focused on this big chunk in the middle of this triangle of a basic need that they cannot perform, they cannot achieve, they cannot, they cannot give you their very best um, because they as a human being have some needs that haven't been met. So they need time to grieve. They need time to work through these issues and you've got to give them some space for that because we're working with people after all, we're not working with machines and they have emotions and they have needs. So important to understand that as a leader, I think it's a really uh, a good concept to understand. And if you understand people and you care about people first, you care about all those basic needs, they'll feel that. And uh, they'll appreciate that and they'll be loyal and they'll give more of themselves when they are in a good space. Another motivation theory, things that, that motivate people, um, 
it's very much the same thing in terms of you have your basic exist existential needs okay that are material and psychological all right then you have needs that are relatedness um, in nature for instance the need for relationships the need for friends and then you have the need to grow um, you need to be motivated to grow and so when your existential needs and your social needs are taken care of uh, then you'll have a need to grow and to uh, learn and to perform and to uh, um, work yourself up in your career. So again, we're trying to understand how pe what people need in order to be led um, to be better in our organization and to give more. Another motivation theory is um, Herzberg's two-factor theory. He talks about, first of all, hygiene factors and motivation factors. Okay, so first of all, you have employees who are dissatisfied and they're unmotivated. Okay, so typically what the ideal is employees that are satisfied. In other words, as a human being, they're satisfied with their life um, and therefore they can be motivated and they are motivated. So that's the ideal. When you have a, when you have employees that are motivated, that are satisfied and motivated, that is when you're going to get the best out of them and it's going to be the best situation for your organization in terms of what they will do for your organization and the level of um, diligence they will give you however if, if an employee is dissatisfied and, motiv and unmotivated they need to, they need first need all the hygienic factors taken care of in other words their basic needs again food water shelter relationships and so on and then employees will move to not being dissatisfied but unmotivated. Now, this is the third, this is the middle type of employee we have. They are satisfied, however, they're not motivated. So now we get people that are either dissatisfied, unmotivated. Then we get people that are not dissatisfied, they're satisfied but unmotivated. And then we get people that are satisfied and motivated. Okay. The ideal is, is we want people that are satisfied and motivated to be working for us. And we don't always know what's going on in people's personal lives, but you can pretty much tell from day to day whether people are satisfied. Um, if not, they'll be telling you, hey, you know, my desk uh, is, is too small, or my chair is uncomfortable, uh, my computer doesn't work, um, the, the bathrooms are a mess and uncomfortable and dirty. People will tell you these things. We don't have enough coffee. Um, once they're satisfied and they stop griping and moaning because you have satisfied all those needs, you'll see if they're motivated or unmotivated. They'll be motivated to work um, when they are motivated internally and they have reason. Is it a, maybe a salary or some good bonuses that motivate them? Is it the, the people they work with? Is it the company? Is it the product? Is it the vision? Do they have passion? So if they have passion and they are motivated, um, wow, that is, that is a great combination as, as for an employee. So you need to move your employees from being dissatisfied and motivated to being satisfied and unmotivated. And when you have this category of people, you've got to figure out how to motivate them. You've got to find factors that motivate them so they can be satisfied and motivated. Very interesting, don't you think? Um, Nathan, if you look at your own career, where do you think you are in your job and in your career and in your life? Um, I look at these things and I can honestly say that I think that I'm satisfied as a human being and a person, all my needs are met um, and I'm motivated. I love my job. I enjoy what I do. I have a passion for it. I had a passion for the people and the students and the staff. So I think I'm here, uh, but there have been times in my life when I've been here and when I've been here. Um, and so as a manager, you need to look at yourself and ask, where am I? Or as a leader, as a leader, I need to be here, satisfied and motivated because if I'm not, I can't lead people to become satisfied and motivated. So I've got to figure out for myself, how do I get here as a leader first before I can lead other people into this category? Another motivation theory is McClellan's acquired needs. Things we all need, all right? We all need as people. He's got three different things that he says um, are pretty much equal and we need to have achievement. In other words, accomplishment. Success, we need to be able to attain our goals. If our goals are too lofty and we can't attain them, we're always gonna feel disappointed and like a failure. Affiliation, the desire to be liked, the desire to get along. If I don't get along with my colleagues and I'm not liked, I don't have affiliation and I struggle at my job. And then power. 
Now, power is not necessarily power because I have money or power because I have a position, but it's personalized power. I have the power to make my own choices. I have the power to be free. I have the power to uh, do a good job. Um, and then socialized power. That is, yes, power. Maybe I have a title. Maybe I'm a supervisor and I do have some power and authority over the people that I work with. And that is a good feeling because it feels like it's an, it's an achievement and you feel like you've achieved something and you've moved up and that's also important. So people need to feel this when they work for you. And you as a leader or manager also need to feel that you are achieving things, that you are liked and you get along with everyone and that you have some personal and social power as well. So those three things in combination is what we need as employees and as managers and leaders to be the best we can be to be effective, to be efficient. Okay. So if you have any questions about that, uh, please shoot me an email um, as I know that you're busy today um, and I'd be happy to answer any more questions regarding that. But isn't that um, a fascinating, um, isn't this a fascinating topic? Um, like I said, we use leaders and managers so interchangeably, those two roles and words, and we use them so synonymously, but, but they truly are two very distinct things. And once we've clarified that, we can look at people that lead us and decide, well, is this person a manager? Or is this person more a leader and understand their style and what they require of us and why they do certain things, okay? So I just love it. I, I absolutely enjoy this kind of psychological, in-depth discussion, figuring out why we do things as people and what motivates us and, and how do I motivate others and why are others not motivated? Okay. I want to go into this slide. It's more on managers and leaders, and we're going to look at the differences again. Hoping this PowerPoint will open. Okay, it's busy opening. <laughs> it certainly is a warm and gorgeous day here today. It's Thursday morning. Um, I'm here at my office, and um, yeah, there's not very many people here due to COVID, but I am finding it. Um, just good to be here and, and in my office because I feel productive. My door is closed. Um, and um, um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful summer day. And I hope that you're having a great day as well. All right. This I'm taking a little while to open. Come on. Hmm. We just cancel the one. I've got them open twice, and that's probably what's happening. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one, see if that one will open. My computer's having a hard time this morning. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Again, some more on leadership versus management. There is a chart, I think, in here that I want to look at. Here we go. So here are some of the characteristics uh, more characteristics and more detail of leaders versus managers. And like I said, nothing here is negative. It's all just factual, but very interesting. And like I've said, most people are a combination of both, but you have one main area that is that, that tends to be more your strength. Um, and then you have uh, some of the other as well. So it's interesting. I hope you're starting to see what kind of, manager you are are you more managerial or leadership i think the most important thing on this chart here is the style okay the style a leader is very transformational transformational talks about change transitioning um, the bigger picture transactional managers are more transactional it's the day-to-day -day running of transactions and operations and what takes place um, and like we said the processes so here's some of the things that are very unique to a leader 
and to a manager, in terms of their essence, a leader loves change and a manager loves stability. Now, although I consider myself a leader, I do think I prefer stability over too much change. So there's something in my personality that's very managerial. Um, leaders like to lead people and managers manage work. Um, I think I, I prefer to lead people more than I man like to manage work, but I can manage work as well. Work, I do love to work and do my job every day. <laughs> um, leaders have followers and managers have subordinates. So the horizon, leaders are always looking long term and managers look short term, the now and what is happening in the moment. They normally can catch detail really quickly. The leader seeks vision where the manager seeks objectives. In other words, what do I need to do? Tasks. The vision wants, pick, the, the, the leaders want pictures of the future, of how things are going to look um, down the road. Their approach is that the leader sets direction, but the manager plans detail. The leader, their decision making, they facilitate decision making more than making decisions for others. However, managers like to make decisions and let everyone know what they're going to be doing. And it's not negative. It's just a type of style. Leaders, their power is very charismatic and they have a lot of personal power where a manager has more formal power and formal authority and it's been given to them where a leader just has influential power, but managers use the power that's been given to them. Leaders appeal to the heart and managers appeal to the head. Okay, so I love that. Isn't that just really interesting? And we have to appeal to both. When you have employees, you've got to appeal to their hearts, why they're doing things, and their heads, how they have to do it. The energy, leaders are very passionate and managers are very controlled. They're in control and they have control. Um, where leaders are passionate and it's not all about control always. And um, like I said, like to take risks. <laughs> their culture. A leader, the type of culture they have intrinsically is a culture that shapes others and a manager in acts, okay, in acts culture. Their the dynamism, they are leaders are very proactive and managers are reactive. And here again, I try, I, I tend to be reactive sometimes more than I am proactive. <laughs> and so that's where I fall into the managerial role. To persuade, leaders will sell, and to persuade, managers will tell. Interesting. And we talked about transformational and transactional. Exchange. A leader's exchange, excitement for their work, and managers, money for work. In other words, a leader works because it's exciting. They want excitement. They need that excitement, and that is what gives them the passion to work. Okay? Managers, they work for money. They're very practical. You know, they, they work for the amount of money that they get. And that's, that's a very practical uh, nature and part of themselves. Uh, the leaders, they, likes, they like to strive, 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 move forward. With managers, it's all about action. Now, what do I have to do now? What do we have to get done? How do we have to get it done? A leader wants to feel that they are achieving something, whereas in managers want to see the results, the practical results. In terms of risk-taking, Leaders, I've told you, are risk takers. Who manage, managers, they want to minimize all risks at all costs all the time. There's no, they don't want to risk anything. They, they don't like risk. They like stability. Leaders tend to break a lot of the rules. Where well, you have managers, they make a lot of the rules. So do you see how these two work in tandem and also can work against each other? Because the, leader, the manager is making all the rules and the leader wants to break all the rules so that they can make other rules and have other rules to, to live by that are maybe more important and that are better and that serve the, the, the company better. In terms of conflict, a leader will use conflict to their advantage where managers will avoid, uh, avoid conflicts. They don't like a lot of conflict. And that's why they just tell people what to do because they don't want to kind of argue about it and figure it out and, and have conflict and see, well, you know, where the issues are. They just want to tell you, hey, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. Can I have it done by tomorrow, please? <laughs> where leaders use conflict to their advantage. They listen to conflict. They watch conflict and they see conflict brings out the real issues in any environment or in any relationship and even at work, and they will use that to their advantage to figure out, okay, what are the real issues here and where does the real change need to take place? What are people really struggling with? The leaders like new roads in terms of direction and managers want to walk on existing roads as things are. They like to keep things as they are. 
leaders, they, they like to seek the truth. They want to be seeking all the time where managers establish the truth. Um, for leaders in terms of concern, um, they want to find what is right. Okay, when there's concerns, they want to find what is right, which way is the right way, what is the right thing here, where managers tend to want to be right all the time. They believe they are right all the time and they are not, but you know, it, it, it is not negative. Like I've said, it's just, it is something that they um, are naturally, they, and they often are right. <laughs> When credit is due, leaders will give a lot of credit to a lot of people and managers will tend to take credit more than give credit. Also not negative, it just is a different style. Very, very often leaders, a good leader will take, and I've told you this before last week, I said a good leader will take the blame for everything. Even if it's something that someone else did in your organization or your employee, because they're your employee, you will take the blame. However, managers are very quick to blame others. When something is going wrong, they're going to look at, okay, who's to blame? What did they do wrong? Who did what wrong? And they will then forward that blame to whoever it is um, due to. <laughs> so super interesting there, right? Isn't this such an interesting and fascinating chart? Um, like I said, the, the psychology behind it really fascinates me. And people fascinate me tremendously. I'm going to open this and see if we can get in here. Um, it looks like the, yeah, the slide we just talked about, which is the one that I struggled to open. It was this one. Okay, let's see. Maybe it's the same one. I beg your pardon. No, it looks like a different one. Hmm. They look like they're exactly the same, the same slide. What I'm going to do now is I want to go over and take a look at this week. Um, we've talked about the discussion and um, we've talked about your assessment and where you find all the information for your assessment. Let's take a look at our assignment for this week. Um, I have noticed that you have uh, handed in your initial discussion post. Um, Nathan, you can reply to both of my discussions so that you can get the grade, the full grade for your discussion. And um, remember that your replies are due by Sunday. Um, so get those in when you can. And I'll also reply. I'll check every day and then reply to your replies um, as I find time. Um, so far, it looks like your grade's pretty good. You did a great job last week on your assignment, your assessment, and your discussion. And I was very pleased with your level of writing, with your insights, um, even with some of your experience in managerial and leadership roles. Okay. So, uh, Nathan, having listened to all those slides, all the information, do you think that um, you are a manager, or are you more a leader, or are you really a combination of both? Um, and it's important that we consider which jobs in an organization are managerial and which jobs are leadership type jobs. Um, because when you apply for positions, it's extremely important that you understand some positions are going to be very managerial in nature or very transactional, right? Very task heavy. Other positions are going to be very people heavy very transformational. And when you apply for positions, it's important to understand who you are um, as an employee or as a person and even then as a manager because you don't want to apply for a position that is very task heavy when you are a very visionary type person. You're going to struggle. You're going to be unhappy. You're going to be miserable because you're going to be doing something that is not true to your nature on a constant basis. So very important that you understand that when seeking employment. And that's why we do this in this class. Um, and I think it's a very important class for all students to take and to understand. Um, and like I said, even when you lead yourself, are you managerial in nature or are you leadership in nature? And um, the job that you're doing on a daily basis, how does that work? Are you, are you very task orientated and are you doing a job that's task heavy? Are you more people orientated or are you doing a job that is people heavy? Because if you're doing something that is not totally who you are, you are going to struggle. 
and it will be a really difficult task for you. Um, and you won't always be happy. So it's important that we find the job that's going to make you happy. It's going to give you fulfillment as a person. Like we talked about in Maslow's hierarchy, you want to feel fulfilled. You want to feel that you have a purpose and what you're doing contributes to the organization and moves the organization forward. And however that looks, whether it's getting processes in place, whether it's just doing little detailed work, um, or whether it's leading others, whatever that looks like has to be right for you. Um, and that's often why we feel very unhappy in jobs because we are not being fulfilled uh, who we are intrinsically. And uh, then we struggle. All right. So I'm taking a look at week number two. We have talked about our um, discussion, which was the functions of management. And I think you understood all those functions very clearly. And we talked about your assessment. Um, and I showed you where all the information is for your assessment and all the readings that you have to do. I hope that you have found some time this week to, to do some of the readings. Um, and so let's look at our assignment for this week. Okay, once again, they give you quite a few things to read through. They give you quite a few links and video clips. <clears throat> they give you a summary. <coughs> and then they have some questions down here and this is the essence of your assignment so based on the video and summary please answer these two questions number one remember that leading and management managing are not the same you read and heard about several of the actions and decisions gary kelly has made as ceo of southwest airlines so Describe one of Gary Kelly's decisions that tells you he's either a good manager and one of his actions that tell you he's a good leader. Now, they use their words very cleverly here. I beg your pardon. <coughs> he said, describe a decision that tells that he's a good manager. Managers make decisions, right? Actions, which of his actions tell that he's a good leader? So what did he do? What action did he take? Um, and leaders are very action orientated, where managers are very decision orientated. So that's the first part of the question. I would put those into a paragraph each uh, for each one. <coughs> what do you think are better benefits of treating employees? Sorry, uh, what do you think are the benefits of treating employees even better than the customer? Sorry, I'm going to just pause the video for a second. I have got a cough in my throat. <coughs> Sorry about that, I'm back. <laughs> a little cough in my throat. <clears throat> so the second part of your assignment says, what do you think are the benefits of treating employees even better than customers? Now, now that is a very, very interesting thought because I don't know if businesses often realize this, the value of your employees because without your employees you would not have a business you would not have an organization and if you don't treat them properly they're going to leave you can have high turnover you're going to spend a lot of time advertising a lot of money advertising a lot of time training and retraining people and the emotional um uh, uh, impacts on your organization when people are coming and going or when you don't find good employees um, not only the emotional impact, <clears throat> but also the financial impact um, on your, on your um, organization. And what about the impact on other employees when their friends are coming and going and, and leaving? And, and um, it's, 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 it can be very complicated and disturbing and disruptive. And um, so therefore, it is very important that we think about how we treat employees and that we treat them maybe even better than our customers because they are the ones who stay long term. They are the ones who then treat the customers. The way they're going to be treated is the way they're going to be treated is the way they're going to treat their customers, don't you think? Well, that's just kind of my opinion. What do you think about all of that? Um, so that's a very good question, and I'm going to be very interested to read your answer about that. So it says, for your assignment expectations, answer the questions using paragraph form. So I would answer question number one and I'll split it up into two paragraphs because there are two um, rather 
detailed uh, um, responses that are needed for each part of that question. And then question two, I would put that into another paragraph. So you would have, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. <clears throat> So you have at least three main paragraphs to your assignment. Combined, your answer should be at least 500 words. That should give you relatively close to 500 words. Use a combination of your own ideas and context from the, from content from the text, keeping in mind the 80-20 rule, which means that 80% of the information in your assignment and the thoughts in there should be your own. 20% comes from outside resources, um, from ProQuest and Shark, which are in your shelves, which I'm sure you know where to find all the information and your resources. You need at least two references and two citations. Um, you need to use institutional writing guidelines. This is a level one class, so it needs to still look like um, your typical APA style writing assignment, um, do a cover page, number the pages, give a reference page, um, just have the basics at least in there um, in order to get the full points for APA style and institutional writing guidelines. If you have any more questions on those, please feel free just to call me or email me and I'll happily answer questions on that. But um, looking at your previous paper, <clears throat> from last week, it does seem like you are familiar with uh, the institutional writing guidelines. So well done on that. Just keep keep going um, on the same track and trend, and I'm sure you'll be fine for this particular assignment. <clears throat> so that is your assignment. So that's really all you have for this week is that assignment. You have done your discussion, finished the assessment. Um, and once again, a reminder to all the daily checkpoints, those five points every day really can make a huge difference. Um, if you don't do them, you could lose quite a few points and um, even the extra credit, if you do all of them, remember you get some extra credit each week and that really helps your grade. So I would encourage you, Nate, I know you're working for a good grade in this class to bring up your GPA. So I would encourage you to, um, yes, make sure you get all those daily checkpoints done. And that really is all for today's lesson. Um, unfortunately, we can't do an in-class activity because uh, you are not with us. Um, I do appreciate that you came online yesterday to let me know that you have a busy day. Um, and I do appreciate that you were in class on Monday. Um, so our discussion on Monday and the work that was covered, the PowerPoints and the information, the content and the discussions that we had, I will use those because you answered a lot of questions, you were engaged, you participated, and I will use that as our in-class activity points, if that's okay with you. Um, and then um, obviously this week, your assignment, how you answer this assignment will give me um, a very big indication of whether you listened to this recording and uh, that you understand the differences between managers and leaders. Um, and um, yes, so I will see, I'll be able to see if you've participated in this. Um, in one of your discussions, you're welcome to let me know. <clears throat> uh, as one of your discussion replies, let me know whether you think that you are a manager or a leader. Um, let me know why you think that. Let me know if that has changed your mind and your perspective a little bit about as an employee, as well as one day being in a supervisory role. Um, I want to hear some of your thoughts on that. <clears throat> so please go into your discussion and as one of your replies this week, let me know what you think. And then also let me know whether you think I am a leader or a manager. Judging by all those characteristics for each, do I tend to be more a leader or more a manager? And then I'm going to reply to that and let you know what I think, some of my thoughts. And um, I kind of, I've, I've watched you over the, the months that I've gotten to know you and I kind of think I know where you are, um, but that's only a guess. You will know more because you know yourself better than I do. <laughs> obviously. So uh, let's take a look at that this week and see if um, we can figure those out for each other and make that a fun exercise for our discussion. Well, okay, Nate, I hope that you are having a wonderful day and that wraps up management, uh, managers, manage, <laughs> managerial and leadership theories um, and principles for this week. Um, next week, we're going to be taking a look um, at some other aspects of management. And I look forward to that. We are dealing with decision making. Wow. So managers and leaders have different ways of making decisions. 
And we're going to look a little more um, at that next week. Obviously, decision making, one of the most important aspects of leadership, um, of being in a supervisory position or role. Um, <clears throat> like I said, even for yourself, if you, are, if you don't have any employees under you, what are the decisions that you make as someone who leads and manages yourself? Um, our decision making process has a profound effect on the way we lead others and the way we lead ourselves. And uh, we need to be able to make decisions effectively, efficiently, not always quickly. That's not the issue of decision making, but it's about making the right decision. And some decisions take long, some decisions are quick, some decisions are needed to be made quickly. And do we have those skills? And what are those skills needed to be able to make decisions on a daily basis? And um, the right decisions that affect others and um, that affect ourselves, that affect our organization, our institution, our working environment, our own careers. And so I'm looking forward to getting into some of that with you next week. Um, but before we do, let's wrap up with this week's assignments and assessment. Um, I look forward to reading your assignment and your thoughts and even your thoughts in your discussion and replying to those. Um, I'm really enjoying this class. I hope that you are enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying it. And um, take care uh, and I'll see you then next week on Monday morning. And until then, I hope your weekend is good. And remember you have until Sunday midnight, 11.59, Sunday night um, to get this week done. And um, we'll move into next week. We're halfway through this course. Can you believe it? Halfway through this mod. Gosh, it's going so quickly, but I truly am enjoying this with you. Okay, Nate, take care and um, have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye.